In our last video, we uncovered pompoir, the ancient sex practice of mastering the vaginal muscles to squeeze, lock, milk, pulse, and even twist a partner during sex. Today, we're gonna travel back in time and see if we can answer some questions. Like, where does pompoir come from? Was this ever a sacred ritual? And is it true that Wallace Simpson used these skills to make King Edward VIII abdicate the throne for her? Let's find out, shall we? First things first, we need to preface this video by saying that there's very little information about Pompoir out there. Historians haven't documented the practice and it doesn't appear in famous sex literature like Kama Sutra or Dante's Inferno. One of the main reasons why we developed the Olympus program in the first place is that there really wasn't a structured step-by-step -step methodology to the practice out there. Nonetheless, different cultures throughout time have included pelvic floor training as part of their sacred rituals. Let's start by going back to ancient Greece. The time is 430 BC. A hetaira and her client flirt on a couch inside the symposium. This is not to be taken lightly. Hetairas were highly educated sex workers, conversationalists and entertainers, and they were amongst the only women allowed in the symposium. In her book, Raising the Skirt, Catherine Blackledge writes that these famous court sams were able to split a clay phallus using their vaginal muscles. Moving on from Greece to Egypt, much like Cleopatra, a woman who these skills are also often attributed to, in fact, Kimanami refers to hers as the vagina that launched a thousand ships. We're gonna focus our attention now into the transcripts of Gustave Flaubert. Gustave Flaubert was a French novelist famous for pieces such as Madame Bouvary and Bouvard et Pécuchet, but today we're not gonna focus on those. <laughs> Instead, we're gonna focus on the notes he wrote during his trip to Esne, a small town on a bend of the Nile. There, he met courtesan Kuchuk Hanem, and they shared a few incredible encounters. In Gustav's words, as I kissed her shoulder, I could feel her necklace against my teeth. Her vagina milking me was just like rolls of velvet. I felt ferocious. Hmm, milking, huh? Now that sounds familiar. So we know that Greek women were onto something, and we know that Egyptian women were definitely onto something. But what about the land in the Far East that gave us arguably the world's greatest book on sex to ever exist? Given how much emphasis this region of the world places in the relationship between mind, body and spirit, it is no surprise that we find traces of Pompoir in India, specifically amongst the Devadasi community. The Devadasis became a thing circa 800 AD, when a queen from the Somavamshi dynasty decided that in order to honor the gods, certain women would have to marry and dedicate their lives to them. These women had high status among several regions of India, and their main duties involved taking care of a temple and learning classical dances to perform during rituals. But India is as vast as it is diverse, and in some regions, Part of the Devadasi's duties were to also provide pleasure to the worshippers of the temple. This is where history gets a little confusing, as some writers will attribute the art of Sohajali Mudra, the contraction of the vaginal canal to direct sexual energy, to the Devadasis, connecting them with a spiritual practice and even sacred prostitution, while others will attribute prostitution of the Devadasis as the negative result of the practice losing its significance during British rule. Regardless, pelvic floor lifts and connections to one's sexual organs have been part of spiritual practices in Indian culture for a long time. The Ananga Ranga is another book, written in the 16th century, long after the release of the Kama Sutra, that also depicts some of the movements between the yoni and the lingam, or the penis and the vagina, for the practice of sacred sex. To quote directly, the wife must ever strive to close and constrict the yoni until it holds the linga as with a finger, opening and shutting at her pleasure and finally acting as the hand of the Gopala girl who milks the cow. Here's yet another mention of the milking technique, which is a beginner slash intermediate exercise we explained thoroughly in the Olympus program. These concepts of deep focus and mindfulness during lovemaking might ring a bell for you if you've ever heard of tantric sex the slow, meditative practice of the sexual encounter that focuses on long-duration pleasure rather than achieving an orgasm quickly. 
While you don't need to practice Hindu or Buddhist Tantra to enjoy Pompoir, some of the students choose to incorporate moves like locking, whipping, and ringing while doing the yab yum phase of tantric sex. This is a portion where couples connect sexually but without external movement at all, with the purpose of delaying orgasm so that it becomes much longer and intense when it happens. As you can see, Indian spiritual culture and sex are closely linked, and you can fall into a very deep, pun intended, rabbit hole if you start researching it. But now, let's move to the north for a bit, to the Middle Kingdom, because there's a reason another name for Pompoir is Shanghai's Grip. As you may have guessed, the relationship between spirituality and sex was not exclusive to India. Taoism also provided some guidelines for sex as a way of joining energies. In fact, as Jolan Cheng, a Canadian sexologist and Taoist philosopher puts it, women had a lot of power when it came to lovemaking, because they finished the act undiminished, had the potential to create life, and didn't have to worry about ejaculating or a refractory period. Not just that, but women were believed to elongate men's lives through sex, specifically through the release of jing, or nutritive essence, during orgasm, that men could absorb. This is why Sunu, the female advisor to the Yellow Emperor, noted 10 crucial indicators of female satisfaction and placed a lot of importance in men pleasing their women. Yep, this chick was the real MVP. It's Britney, bitch. While today there's a lot of controversy surrounding Jade Eggs and Benoit Balls, according to British historian Ray Tannehill's book Sex in History, these tools were used by Taoist practitioners to stimulate the life force in women by strengthening the pelvic floor and the vaginal walls. The modern adaptation of these tools, developed through scientific research and the help of pelvic floor physicians, are called Kegel Balls, which can be helpful tools in building strength for pompoir, but we'll get there. Because before we move on to the present day, we need to talk about modern monarchies. If you've made it this far through the video, it's time to talk about Wallace Simpson. But first, it seems like she wasn't the first woman in court rumored to have mastered her vaginal muscles. Catherine Blackledge also ascribes these talents to Diane de Poitiers, King Harry II's royal mistress and advisor until his death. She was also a major patron of French Renaissance architecture. Talk about using your vagina for good. Any Cosmo girl would have known. Now, what about Wallace Simpson, the woman who single-handedly scandalized the British Empire when King Edward VIII fell head over heels for her and abdicated the throne so that they could get married? She was twice divorced, American, and had no money or title. Ever since that moment, the world wondered and vicious minds speculated about how she could have possibly made Edward broadcast from Windsor Castle that he could no longer be king without the woman he loved. Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. All that follows is pure hearsay, but the story seems to begin during Wallace's time in China. She arrived in 1924 to meet Earl Winfield Spencer Jr., known as Wen, who served as commander of the gunboat Pampanga in Hong Kong. Wen is believed to have been an alcoholic, who took Wallace along to brothels with him during their time together. This is where it is believed that she mastered the art of the Shanghai Squeeze, or the China Clinch, as it's also called. In fact, according to lecturer Anne Seba, it is believed that Queen Mary, Edward's disapproving mother, had compiled a China dossier detailing her behavior in brothels and sing-song houses. Rumors spread amongst the royals that the only way 41-year-old Wallace could have possibly had King Edward so wrapped around her finger was through her sexual prowess. Apparently she has certain skills acquired in an establishment in Shanghai. Whether these rumors are true or not, we can certainly commend the love story so strong that a king would give up his throne and title to be with his woman. All right, we're getting closer to the present day on our timeline here. Let's travel to University of Southern California, 1948, where assistant professor of gynecology, Dr. Arnold Kegel, publishes his first paper describing the role of progressive resistance exercise in restoration of the perineal muscles. Or, in layman's terms, he develops Kegel exercises. 
Dr. Kegel found that a combination of fast, slow, and long-duration contractions were extremely effective at preventing urinary stress incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse. And though his focus wasn't on pleasure specifically, we still have a lot to thank Arnold for. Thank you! Not only was he the first doctor to suggest that voluntary exercise could prevent and reverse symptoms of a weak pelvic floor, but he invented the perineometer, a device still used today to measure these voluntary contractions. As we land on the last stop in this sexual treasure hunt, we'd bet some money Dr. Kegel never thought his exercises would be used quite the way we're about to discover. It's time to explore present-day ping-pong shows. Oh, Esther gets naked, but she doesn't dance. Then what does she do? <laughs> Sweet mother nature! Famously found amongst Thailand's strip club scene, these performances feature dancers using their vaginal muscles to hold, eject, or blow objects, commonly ping pong balls. The popularity of these shows in Thailand dates back to the mid-1970s, and though they're now officially prohibited under the obscenity legislation of Thai law, the practice continues to be a staple attraction for tourists. Ping pong balls aren't the only objects at play. The entertainer's repertoire can include expelling a goldfish into a bowl, shooting a dart into a balloon, or even pouring beer into a client's cup. The practice is controversial at best, but one thing's for certain, the control these performers have over their pelvic floor muscles is absolutely outstanding. And it's no wonder another name for pompoir is the Singapore Grip. And as we come to the end of this video, we have one last fun fact to share. Now fully settled into the 2020s era. The Singapore Grip is actually a six-part television drama series adapted from J.G. Farrell's novel of the same name. The show focuses on the Blackets, a British family in control of the leading trading company in colonial Singapore. A running joke in the story is the characters Matthew's search for the meaning of the Singapore grip technique and getting different answers from different people he talks to. Lucky for us, our search has been a bit more fruitful than Matthew's. From Greece to Egypt, from India to China, from the US to Thailand, it's safe to say that different cultures have their own reasons and approaches for training the female pelvic floor. So what about the present day then? Where does our quest end? Well, here at Goddess we like to think we're taking a small step forward in female pleasure and sexual health by creating a structured, step-by-step -step program and community teaching a variety of pompoir techniques. Our goal is for every woman to feel empowered to enjoy the full sexual potential of their bodies and to teach through science-backed methods how to optimize pleasure. If you're ready to join the selected group of women who have mastered their sensuality, women like Cleopatra, Diane de Poitier, and Wallace Simpson, download our beginner's guide on Pompoir at goddess.com slash free guide. And make sure to check out our main video explaining Pompoir so you can understand more about the anatomy that makes these skills truly possible.